Right, two big votes in Congress on issues that directly relate to women. The U.S. House of Representatives voting to remove the deadline for the ratification of the Equal Rights Amendment and the House passing the Violence Against Women Reauthorization Act. Now, these were mostly party line votes with the vast majority of Democrats voting for the measures and Republicans voting against. But here's a look at our region in particular. All three House members here in Western New York voting for the Violence Against Women Reauthorization Act. Only GOP Representative Chris Jacobs voted against removing the deadline for the ratification of the ERA, the Equal Rights Amendment. He said that he felt it was unconstitutional. Democrat Brian Higgins voted for it, and so did Republican Tom Reed. He was actually a co-sponsor of that particular resolution. So tonight we want to spend some time talking about these measures and what they mean and how the pandemic has only made it more difficult for women to achieve true equality. Yeah, we welcome to the show right now Dr. Karen King. She is executive director of the Erie County Commission on the Status of Women. It is great to have you on the show. Thanks for your time. Well, thanks for inviting me. I'm pleased to be here. And we want to start with the Equal Rights Amendment. So this is an effort that dates back many, many, many decades. And it may be surprising to some to know it's even still an issue at all, but it is. And there is a lot of history here. And to kind of make sure everyone is, is caught up, we want to begin by simply establishing what's happening here, what's at stake, and why Congress is voting to extend the deadline for states to ratify this amendment. 1923, actually, was when Alice Paul announced the Equal Rights Amendment in Seneca Falls. So yes, many decades ago. Um, well, I think it just is important at this point, here we are in the 21st century, we just celebrated the anniversary of suffrage 100 years, yet we cannot codify equality in our most important legal document, the U.S. Constitution. And by not doing that, it speaks volumes in terms of the value we attach to women and the pursuit of equality. It's not enough to talk the talk, we have to walk the walk. That's why it's important that it becomes a constitutional amendment. It is unclear if there are enough votes for this particular measure to pass in the Senate, where um, a couple of, of Republican senators have said that, that they're for it, um, Lisa Murkowski and Susan Collins in Maine, but most Republicans appear to be opposed to it. You would seemingly need 60 yes votes. Um, and the same is true with reauthorizing, reauthorizing the Violence Against Women Act. That's the other piece of legislation we're talking about here. Can you explain the controversy surrounding that and why the partisan split for this? It's unfortunate because equality should not be a partisan issue and certainly protecting women um, and, and fighting the scourge of domestic violence and sexual violence in our, in our society should not be a partisan issue. And um, I guess they say the devil's in the details in Congress. Um, certain loopholes, certain laws um, with VAWA in particular around um, access to um, guns, if you have a, a record of domestic violence could be one of the sticking points for some Republicans, I suppose. Um, but it, this, at this point, this should not be a partisan issue. It, it should be very clear that women are equal and we should be treated equally. And we certainly should have access to the best resources to contend with domestic and sexual violence. And the people that are on the front lines providing the services should have access to training and resources. So that's why VAWA is very important. And meanwhile, we talk about being in 2021 and research has shown that the pandemic's economic toll has disproportionately affected women employment rates somewhere near where they were in the 80s. What is it going to take now to fix that <laughs> moving forward, do you think? Um, well, a lot of money, <laughs> which we'll, we'll, we'll see some, um, but a shift in, in policy and a shift in um, our perceptions and the roles that women play, even as we're talking here in the 21st century, uh, women are still considered to be the primary caregivers, whether it be of children or aging adults. Um, we saw many women leave uh, the workforce because they had to stay home and take care of children who were, who, were, who were not going to school or because of daycare centers being closing or being compromised because they didn't have the resources they need. So until we shift our mentality around 
who's responsible for providing care in our community. It should be all of us, not just women. Um, that's one of the, the major stumbling blocks. Um, and also women um, are proportionally inhabit um, low paying work or hourly work. Um, and, and in our community in Western New York, a lot of uh, people who work in, in the um, hotel, leisure, um, restaurant industries, of course, those industries were decimated. Yeah, no doubt. Um, Dr. Karen King is executive director of the Erie County Commission on the status of women. This is such an important topic, and we're going to talk about it more on this show, I promise, as we move forward. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. And we want to thank you, everybody, for watching tonight. Remember, you can keep texting us your questions and your comments to 716-849-2200.